Welcome back, America. It's Hugh Hewitt. Good morning. David Bonson is my guest. He joins me every few weeks to oversee what's going on over the waters of the United States and abroad in the world of finance. Good morning, David. How are you? Good morning, Hugh. I am wonderful. David, I, uh, I wanted to talk to you because I always tell people what I'm invested in when I'm not. I have no money under management by the Bonson Group, which is David's phenomenally successful Bonson Group. So I have no interest in what he says other than to be informed. I only own two stocks on my, you know, the only two self-invested stocks are Amazon and Palantir. Everything else is uh, mutual funds because I'm not smart like you, David. This isn't what I do. You don't do radio and I don't do investing. But I do believe that Amazon, which has gone up 53% year to date, and Palantir, which has gone up like 100% year to date, is because of the AI revolution. Now, what do you think about stocks with an AI component? Amazon obviously has cloud and, and retail and advertising as well, but Palantir is a pure AI play. I bought it because Peter Thiel's a genius and I know he, he started the company. What are you telling your clients about the AI stuff? And then I have a news story to discuss with you about it. So basically the history of investing going back to tulip mania and Holland in the 17th century is one of uh, human beings being susceptible to human nature. That means euphoria, that means greed, that means falling for things. So there's a ton of good investments out there. Some companies in the AI space are included, but what we have to do is avoid tulip mania, dot com, Florida condos in 2006, Bitcoin, and now there's going to be a lot of tulip mania in AI. Now, some companies are real, some companies are fake, but a lot of companies are gonna throw AI in their branding and really have nothing to do with monetizing artificial intelligence. We prefer companies, Hugh, that are doing AI, have an angle on monetizing AI that already have a real business, that already have a big business, cash flow. So it's more boring and we're not gonna get the same hit, the same octane with companies like IBM and Broadcom, they're going to do very well in AI, but they're not relying on it. They're not a shiny object, a tulip mania. So if you looked at my two stocks, Palantir and Amazon, what would you tell me? Um, if you want me to do this on air, I will. I'd be more into Palantir as an AI play. Amazon, it's just purely about the multiple. You mentioned they're up 50% this year. They were down over 50% last year and it's not because it's a good or bad company it's a phenomenal company but it's way too expensive it just trades at a multiple we wouldn't buy but if you ride it out long enough as you probably have obviously oh, i've had it forever long. yeah i don't trade stocks david i think i told you that i think that's for unless people are investing with people like you who do this for a living they're suckers because do you agree with me by the way that nobody uh, should trust their own. Oh, I can do this. I can do this an hour a day and I can have a program on my computer and I can trade stock. I think that is a fool's game. Yeah, of course it is. And, and people intuitively know it deep down, but the problem is stocks do go up a tiny bit more than they go down. And so sometimes people just like going to the craps table, you're going to win and then you might think you're kind of good at it. But no, I mean, look, we're like you, we don't trade either. And, and because I want to buy companies, I am first and foremost, a free enterprise ideologue. All public equity markets are for me as a way to monetize for clients, my belief in free enterprise. David, let's stay there for a moment. Yesterday, I did two big stories on decoupling from China. The fact that our McKinsey's and our Bain's can't get any work in China and they're telling their kids in Beijing and Shanghai, you're not coming to work for us until 2025 at the earliest. Meanwhile, China is withdrawing its money and they're doing it not directly. They haven't ordered anyone to get out of the U.S., but all of their investors are getting out of the U.S. because they see a decoupling coming. How significant of a macro impact is that? Well, let's be clear on the second point that it's going to be, it's a very slow thing. You do not have a ton of Chinese investors running out of the U.S. It's a slow drip. The bigger issue that's moving quicker is export restrictions with our technology companies to a point where the big group of semiconductor companies had to go to the Biden administration last week and say, okay, let's settle down a little here and see how these restrictions have worked so far before we put new ones on. A decoupling is coming, but it will be like a, um, a slow process over time that I believe will result in various levels of onshoring and reshoring to the United States, yet 
if the government screws it up, and by government, I do not mean G here, I mean our government, with all kinds of corporate welfare legislation and picking winners and losers and other cronyism, it will screw it all up. We need the U.S. to rebuild a certain manufacturing base that decouples from China for national security, for pharmaceuticals, for various key components of our economic life, and we do not need it by the government picking winners and losers and giving money to billionaires. Now, David Bonson and the Bonson Group, do you guys invest in wind energy at all? Because I think it's a fool's game as well. Yeah, we do not invest in anything that doesn't make money. So the answer is no. And do you think it's a fool's game? Yesterday, I did a story that absolutely rolled my eyes back. Uh, billions of dollars have been spent on the East Coast trying to stand up wind farms, not one of which is working. Based, It's no. all the Biden money that flowed in and like New London and other old decaying seaports are trying to revitalize on this stuff. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is like the train to nowhere in California. Yeah. And by the way, it was the Obama administration, too, that put a ton of money into this that all didn't work out. So the history is filled. It just repeats itself with more of these stimulus bills and green energy bills and whatnot. And by the way, they're usually backed by very wealthy people that are receiving government money to go fail with an endeavor. Look, I am all for private capital going into wind energy and trying things, experimenting. Um, I don't believe it will work. I think the intermittent reality of wind is something that we have a little bit of history now to, to teach us about. But there's maybe someone who can uh, monetize this. I would trust Exxon and Chevron to invest in wind energy more than I would uh, trust the Solyndra of 2023. Now, David, I want to walk back to AI because uh, in the Financial Times this morning, Anthony Blinken and Gina Raimondo, Secretary of State and Secretary of Commerce, to shape the future of AI, we must act quickly. That sends a shudder down my spine because my two stocks are AI stock. The last thing I want is the government acting quickly on my investment area. What do you think about that? Yeah, you're right to be very skeptical of this, but I'm going to add to the cynicism. Over the weekend, I saw that the seven major players I do believe one of them is a name you own, are also saying, okay, we agree to some safeguards here. We're, we're okay now with some government regulation. And this reminds me over and over again of the trend in so much where a company achieves a certain plateau, then kicks over the ladder and acts like they don't know how they got up there. And so inviting government regulation, moving quickly, once you've already achieved scale in the marketplace, you have the technology and infrastructure, it's what they want to do with energy. They say the Biden administration has not hurt Chevron and Exxon. They have hurt all the other drillers and producers that are not at the size and scale. And I think that's what's going to happen with AI, is that now you're going to leave an advantage for Meta. You're going to leave an advantage for Amazon, for NVIDIA, and hurt a lot of other innovation downstream um, I'm always very skeptical of cronyism, Hugh. Have you watched the AI dilemma? I, I am skeptical of the film. I'm trying to get the film uh, uh, authors and presenters on. It was an Aspen Institute discussion, and they warned about things like it takes three seconds of voice to create an entire voice analog. Uh, they're worried about AI. Are you worried about artificial intelligence, David Bonson? I'm not, and a lot of my friends on the right are, and I just want to quickly explain to you, because you, like me, love history. But here, we've been worried about every technological advancement since the wheel. Everything that comes up, that horse and buggy is always going to be some new issue. And ultimately, it ends up, first of all, attracting a lot of grift, a lot of shiny objects, investments blow up. But then when the dust settles, you get good companies and you get a good public utility, meaning utility to the public, not literally. And I don't believe that AI is anything more ultimately than very, very fast digital computing. And so will there be abuse? Will there be bad things that happen? Yes, I still believe in sinful human nature. So if we get rid of total depravity and the doctrine of original sin, then we won't have anything to worry about. But as long as we have those things, it's going to permeate AI and everything else. And that's what we deal with as a free society. We organize our society around principles that deal with these imperfections. Now, uh, my friend Arthur Brooks, I don't know if you know him, David. Arthur said years ago, and he was doing more economists than happiness research. 
He told me something that stuck with me. It takes 20 years to revalue assets correctly after a panic. We had a panic in 2000 and 2008. Not, it, it led to a recession, but it was a panic. Do you think the market has accurately revalued assets? Because I look at the commercial office building market and I say to myself, the panic plus COVID, nobody knows how to price a commercial real estate building now. What do you think? Yeah, I don't, I think that formula is a little questionable just simply because you can't say it will take 20 years when the Fed is in the middle of things distorting the discount rate. The, the, basically the scale that you're gonna use to weigh an asset has been very distorted. And so I think it can take longer or shorter. In Japan's case, it didn't take, uh, it's now 30 years. It didn't take 30 years to revalue. It took 30 years to recover and they still haven't fully done it. So I think that unfortunately the central bank makes some of that harder. Um, look, assets can be valued uh, as a sum of cash flows. That part isn't hard, but when they actually uh, normalize, I would argue a lot of the market is not normalized now because it's overpriced. And then there's also still post 2008, a lot of people that don't want to come back into the market. So it's a mixed bag and the Fed, central bank interventions, they make it all a lot harder here. David, where can people read your analysis on a regular basis? Dividendcafe.com is the best web address to give on radio because it's easier to remember than having to spell my Scandinavian last name dividendcafe.com they'll find my weekly investment commentary anything they ever see with my name on it i wrote every word myself because i Hugh, do not believe in ghostwriters you and me both but i like being a ghostwriter when i was young it paid the bills but i don't i don't yeah. ever put out anything other than what i write quickly david 30 seconds is china's economy in a little trouble a lot of trouble or trouble that we've never seen before um, it's definitely not trouble we haven't seen before. We've seen it a lot, and I think it is a lot of trouble, but it will be made worse if they go down the path we did and Japan did. If they bring in their central bank and fiscal stimulus to help instead of let just deflate the bad debt, liquidate the bad debt, fight through it, China will be better off. I worry that they will start to try to export their deflation around the world like Japan did and like the United States did, and that is not going to help them at all. Thank you, David Bonson. Go to thedividendcafe.com, di just dividendcafe.com, dividendcafe.com. Always appreciate talking to David. Stay tuned.